Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Let's take a look at Terrace Marshall Jr. What makes him a compelling wide receiver prospect in this 2021 class? Well, we're going to see him featured on the outside here, left hash in the red zone. You're going to watch him score on this play. It's a contested play working over the middle as that safety comes across and he's able to make the play. Pretty sweet catch right here, right? Defender coming across. He's able to reach for the ball as he's going to the ground. Nice concentration, good focus, tough play in the face of potential contact. The contact's not as bad as you would expect here, but it is up near his head, and it is coming towards his chest. This is a pass that a lot of receivers would probably not catch because they wouldn't be able to work through that catch point. So that's a really nice aspect of the of the play right here, is be able to extend his arms, have the hand strength to really continue through the reach through his arms and close to his head by that safety. Take the contact from behind, still come down with the ball. But let's also take a look at the route. And you're going to see here, this is a nice release that gets him to the inside. And what he's doing here is that he's widening the outside defender with his stem so that he can give a potential sale of an outside route which is attacking the leverage of the defender who's playing to the outside and then work back to the inside here. And that gives him enough of the room to be able to attack this ball and make the catch. Now, how does he do that? You're going to see a little bit of a step to the outside and then he's going to give you three quick footwork, three quick steps. And that's normal for an inside release. A three quick is a good move for an inside release. And what you're going to see is one, two, three. And then he comes back to the inside there. Good job. I'm also a fan of how Marshall here in the slot on the right side at the right hash attacks the ball with his hands on this particular target. Because you can see the target is a little bit behind his brake path. And he has to come back for the ball. So he does a good job of extending his arms, getting his hands in the right position. He doesn't use underhand position. And the difference between underhand position and overhand position is he'd probably have his hands near his numbers and he'd be waiting another step to be able to get this ball because this is about a foot higher than where he would have caught it if he used underhand technique. And as you can see here, the defender has his arm up here at this point to swat down. If he uses his hands down below here, either the defender either swats the ball away before it reaches him or as he catches the ball here, the defender is able to make contact and then swat and be a much more dangerous play for Marshall to be able to make the catch. But in this case, Marshall's already secured the ball before the defender makes contact. He's got his back to the defender. Defender swats down but completely misses because Marshall's able to secure the ball away from the reach of the defender and work across. So you're looking at a, you know the effect of being able to make a technically sound catch bleeds over to securing the ball before the defender can make the play. You also like here with this route, he kind of widens to this outside with the off coverage defender here, widens outside and then breaks back inside. And I think he flattens out this route a little bit more before he's so that he can get behind that defender. But again, this part right here, the ability to kind of work back to the ball attack it at its highest point, arms away from his chest. A lot of receivers would try to bucket catch this ball, you know, kind of over the shoulder, lean, just kind of tilt the shoulder back a little bit. Not Marshall. Great job securing the ball. But when Marshall has to make a play on a ball where he can't use picture perfect technique, he has the focus and concentration to do so. And I, and this is a great example of that because he's facing physical coverage at the top of his route here he gets even with the defender the defender now wants to kind of pin him to the boundary and Marshall's fast enough to get past because the defender's looking back for the ball a lot of that is because Marshall is looking back to the ball early see how he looks over that inside shoulder and immediately turns right here he's trying to bait the defender to look back and that's exactly what the defender does right here that slows him down. Marshall continues to accelerate, and then he uses his hands well. It's not really a push-off. What you, I call it is framing separation, extending his arms to prevent the defender from getting further inside the bubble of his frame. 
And he's able to use that hand to just kind of keep it extended so the defender can't run through it because he's already has that space. He didn't push off to get that space. All he did is he put his hands on the defender as he continued to accelerate and kept that arm extended as he was separating. And that's something that a lot of people mistake for push-offs. It's just a frame of, of his separation, framing the space around him and maintaining it as the defender tries to run and impede into it. And as that defender is able to you know, clamp down right there, good job of being able to turn with that shoulder to, to shield off a little bit and use one hand to track that ball in. Maybe not picture-perfect technique, but it fits well for this given situation. Gets both feet in bounds, drags his body. Good job. I like the full extension on this play also when he tracks the ball over shoulder up the seam route. Deep seam. Look at that full extension right there. Great job tracking that ball. Pulling it in. Maintaining the stride. And then as he begins to lose that stride and lose balance. Does a good job with the balance touch. And watch him turn his body right there to avoid landing on the ball. That's called embracing the fall. Embracing the fall so you don't land on the ball. You don't disrupt your security of that target. Good job looking that ball in, snatching it, balance touch, embrace the fall. Here's another nice example of extension for the ball. You're gonna see Marshall work inside out on this um, corner route, kind of a circle route, or circles inside, comes back to the outside. Nice extension with the hands right there. Can't get them quite together the way you'd like to see, ideally, but it's a target that's far from his um, frame and at the knee level, maybe even a little bit below that, running back to the ball. Really nice job securing that. And you can see him just kind of follow the arc of the ball with his hands. Out, then back down. Out, down. This is a smart play by Marshall, too. Now you're going to see them scheme to get him free of J.C. Horn. He's going to work from the inside. A little hesitation inside. Let's his receivers get downfield to kind of allow him to get that rub. Horn can't keep up. And instead of tracking this ball over his shoulder and using a bucket catch technique where he could wind up out of bounds, see how he turns back to the ball? Attacks with his hands, thumbs close together. Now he has all that room to the boundary rather than waiting another step to try and catch that. And that gives him room to get two steps in, really even three. And finally, one of the things that I really like about Marshall's game is his ability to transition downhill fast. He uses the catch and pierce technique. You're going to see him work with a little too quick stutter to the outside, back to the inside. And this route's designed to go across the middle. But as he makes his catch, he immediately turns downfield. Look at that turn downfield, makes that defender miss with the reach. And now all this open space, you do not want Terrence Marshall in open space. Terrence Marshall in open space, he's going to be able to accelerate and get through and to get the angles that you want to see from a receiver here. So overall, I mean, again, nice little route set up, nice little too quick stutter as he widens the stem. Looks back to the quarterback, good catch with his hands, immediately turns up field. And that's the thing. A lot of receivers think that they got to square up, make a move. They slow everything down. Defenders are not, they get caught off guard because they're flowing towards where the ball is going to be going based on the break of the route and not the receiver immediately turning downhill. And because he does, these two defenders are caught with their momentum going to the right hash and he's able to work behind that and then work behind the safety and he splits the safety in that you know that's corner back on the right side immediately turning like that great work thanks again for watching for more rsp boiler room videos you can check out my youtube channel matt waldman's rsp film room and my site www.mattwaldmanrsp.com